अमूल्य यू कैन स्टार्ट गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू ज्ञानेशन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन एन ई वर्कशॉप ऑन रिसर्च मैथड्स एंड बायो स्टैटिस्टिक्स jointly organized by government ayurveda medical college bangalore government ayurveda medical college mysore taranath government ayurveda medical college bellary uh heading to our first session uh it will be by dr suhas shetty and uh, he will be delivering a lecture on application of statistics in ayurveda research a short introduction about sir He is an Ayurveda practitioner, teacher, and journals. He has to his credit three books and more than sixty scientific articles in various international peer-reviewed journals. He is recognized PG and PhD guide at Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. He is recipient of various academic awards like Contingent Grant Award from CCRAS New Delhi, Pratibha Puraskar Award for Social Service in Treatment of Alcoholic Disorders and Paralysis. Bishak 2018 Best Doctor Award, Best Paper Presenter Award at various seminars and conferences, etc. To mention a few, he is specialized in mental health care consultation, clinical research, research methodology and medical statistics workshops, examination and workplace stress management workshops, scholastic performance enhancement programs, healthy parenting talks, adolescent education programs, quantum energy medicine. invited talks on yoga meditation etc i welcome you sir uh, now i request sir to take over and start his session thank you very much uh, amulya a very good morning to all of you uh, i doubt it that we thank the organizers for this uh, wonderful opportunity to share few of my experiences in the field of uh, statistics i uh, acknowledge and express my gratitude for the entire team of uh, government arithmetic college bangalore mysore and the taranath government arithmetic college bellary for organizing a very innovative program by name nyaneshana 2021 an e workshop on research methods and biostatistics mainly focusing on post graduates and uh, phd students uh the topic that has been allotted to me is uh, giving you an overview of uh, the basics of statistics and how this statistics is important in ayurvedic research so before i could just start i would like to just uh, bring to the uh, a few inputs by the participants like uh, what comes to your mind when you are whenever you hear about the word statistics so what is that one word which probably ponders you or which really strikes your mind whenever you talk about the word uh, statistics so how do you link the word statistics so i'd like to have some inputs from the participants so that uh, uh, we can just take it forward so what comes to your mind yes i think uh, manju prasad has replied numbers very good statistics is all about numbers very very nice then anybody else would like to give their just we can just put your comments on the chat box what comes to your mind when you talk about the word statistics as mentioned by one of the participants uh, we hear about or we think about numbers mathematics calculations uh, when we talk about yes megana has said it is analysis exactly it has to do a lot with the analysis of the numbers like suppose i ask you how many participants are there in today's webinar uh, how many are from government college by bangalore how many are there from mysore how many of them are from bellary how many of them are from outside these three institutions you can make a prob probable analysis of this very very easily very effectively and probably able to interpret the data exactly you can be also quantifying telling in terms of numbers yeah yeah anything any any morning jolt for anybody like i couldn't see a num good number of uh, uh, reply from uh, the other participants right yeah analysis exactly yeah so these are the few uh, things that comes to your mind whenever we talk about the 
uh, word as statistics. And uh, probably what I'll try to give you is an uh, overview of what is statistics and why it is important for a postgraduate or a PhD student to know the basics of statistics. See, basically, the research methods and the statistics are like two sides of a coin. They go hand in hand. And uh, both of them are equally important for a postgraduate students. And more than, see, these two subjects are not a mere subjects for a postgraduate. It is just like an orientation or a culture uh, which one should have uh, a passion towards research, which should be present to have the understanding of these basic concepts. And that is why they are more than a subject for a postgraduate or a PhD students. It is a part of their life, part of their uh, journey, part of their culture, which has to be brought in uh, into the an individual. That's very, very important. And uh, when it comes to uh, the relationship between the research methods and uh, uh, the biostatistics or the statistics in general, I always feel that they always are complementing to each other. Just as I, if you want me to just tell me uh, what is research and what is statistics, research is the question and statistics is the answer. So if you're able to ask the right question in your research work, you'll be able to get some data and these data can be analyzed and interpreted and you can get some answers or some conclusion in terms of uh, the basic aspects. And that is where probably it is very important uh, in terms of uh, the basic aspects of the research and statistics. Okay, so I'll just try to share my slides and I will uh, begin the presentation. Are you able to see the slides? If anyone can kindly just tell me whether you are able to see the slides. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah. See, whenever we talk about statistics, uh, we people, all the students generally think that this is a very, very difficult subject, a very boring subject and a very useless subject. It's not because always the biology students or the medical students do not like numbers or mathematics. But in fact, if you understand some of the basic aspects of statistics, definitely this subject can be very easy, very interesting, and at the same time, very, very useful for the postgraduate as well as the PhD students. And uh, probably what I'll try to do is uh, limit my talk to for the next 35 minutes and uh, try to finish my talk by uh, 30, uh, 1045, and I could take up some questions from the participants for the next 15 minutes. So this is what I want all the participants to put. Uh, if at all, if we have any, any questions, anytime, you can just put in the chat box and I'll take up at the end of the presentation. So I want you to actively participate. And if you have any, if you want any clarifications or any uh, doubts related with the basics of statistics, you're most welcome. So I'll just restrict my presentation for next 35 minutes. So uh, the basic learning outcomes that we're going to have in today's session is to have a brief outcome or outline of what is the derivation and definition of the word statistics. What are the objectives, branches, and limitation of the word statistics? What is biostatistics and what is medical statistics or health statistics? Uh, talking about the two basic branches of statistics, the descriptive statistics and the uh, inferential statistics. And very importantly, the use of biostatistics in Ayurvedic research. Because whenever we talk about research, there are a lot of myths and misconcepts, which uh, uh, my friend Dr. Supriya Balerav is going to address uh, regarding what are the common myths and misconcepts. And also, there are so many references that are available in Ayurveda about statistics, uh, the concepts of uh, mean, median, mode, correlation, chi-square test. We also have a good number of examples or illustrations available in Ayurvedic literature, which uh, Dr. Lak Lakshmi Narayan sir is going to highlight in the session later today. And my focus will be just to give an orientation towards the importance of statistics for postgraduate students and how we could use these basics of statistics for our research works. So coming to the word derivation of the word statistics, 
This word statistics is derived from the word status or the statista, which basically means a political state. Now, how this word political state is associated with statistics? Because this basic ideas or concepts of statistics was used to run a, a political state, like how much of tax we should collect, how much of uh, we should uh, we should maintain for the running a, a kingdom or a dynasty, what are the various uh, proportion that we should use for the war. So all these were used based on the fundamentals of statistics. And that is how this word has been derived from the word status, means a political state. Because this basic concept is, is used to run or manage a political uh, kingdom or even an institution, organization, an area. If you want to manage, you need the basic knowledge of statistics. And it was a German uh, statistician by name Gottfried Achenhill who coined the word statistic for the first time in literatures. Basically, there are different meanings of statistics. Statistics is a plural of the word statistic. It also has a different meaning as a singular form and has a different meaning as a, a plural form. Before that, there are two important words which one should be aware of before we could move further. One is population, the other one is called a sample. Population is the subject of interest to the researcher. Suppose you are working on diabetes mellitus, or you're working on hypertension, or you're working on PCOD, you're working on piles, you're working on any of the disorders. All the individuals who are suffering with these disorders are called as population. But among this population, based on your diagnostic criteria, inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, based on your sample size, the number of participants you pick for your study in a given scenario is called a sample. So sample is a subset or part of a population and the entire set of your interest is called as, uh, sorry, is, a, is called as population and sample is a subset or the part of the population. So statistic is the summary value of the samples. Suppose you uh, do a study on 50 patients and you get their average uh, uh, weight or you get their average cholesterol, you get their average blood sugar and, and you get some conclusion about your study, some data about your studies, that is called a statistic. And the summary value of the entire population is called as parameter. So these are the two words. Sample will have a statistic and population will have a parameter. And the statistics can be used as a, a plural word representing various numerical quantities like mean, median, variance, which are calculated from the sample values. As a similar form, the word statistics refers to a subject, to a knowledge, a knowledge system. And what is that knowledge or branch? So it is a branch comprising of the methods which are useful for collection, classification, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data. When you start a study with the collect, collecting the necessary information, like suppose you're doing a study on diabetes mellitus, all the necessary information about the patients, patient's data, blood investigations, everything are classified. Then you classify them based on some factors, like maybe male, female, type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, Stula Madhumeha, Krishna Madhumeha, okay, though which is uh, uh, Swatantra, Paratantra, you can classify based on the need or goal of your studies and then present them in the form of tables, graphs, diagrams, etc. And then apply the appropriate statistical test and analyze this data to test the hypothesis. And based on the outcome, you interpret the data or give the meaning to the words that you are, or meaning to the numbers that you have obtained. And that is what is the, the five basic subset of statistics, collection, classification, presentation, analysis and interpretation of data. And it helps to draw some valid conclusion about the population parameter. In a numerical sense, it refers to the numerical values, numbers which are collected in a systematic manner for a de defined purpose in any field of studies. So they are the aggregate of the facts which are expressed in terms of a numerical value. Suppose you're doing a study of hyper on hypertension. So you get the, the necessary information about the systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, okay, their age, their weight, etc. And you express them in the numerical values. 
and that is called as a statistics in a, a plural form so as a singular form it is refer referring a, a subject or a knowledge as a plural form it is referring to a, a numerical values but which is systematically collected so the various definition of statistics goes as it's a science of kings or political uh, or the science of statecraft because it was used to run a, a dynasty it is also called a science of counting because it is all about numbers it is also expressed as the averages or what you common call as the arithmetic means because you you do not talk about the individuals in case of statistics you talk about averages like the average height of the patients coming to the opd is this much or the average blood sugar of the patients coming to your hospital is this much you, you express in terms of the average and that is what is important in statistics there are two important words which is called estimate and the probabilities statistics is all about making your your guess about the probability because you are working on a small samples and generalizing to, to the whole population that is why the most important concept of statistics is all about probability so probability is a science between 0 and 1 where 0 stands for impossible uh, se sequence and 1 stands for certainty whereas statistics is between 0 and 1 which is probability okay so the science of statistics is a method of judging collection collecting the natural or the social phenomena the results from the analysis or enumeration or the collection of the estimates and the most comprehensive definition are the statistics are the numerical statement of the facts which is capable of analysis and interpretation the science of statistics is the study of the principles and the methods applied in collecting presenting analysis and interpreting the numerical data in any field of enquiry so there are important characters of statistics i'll give one simple example suppose you're doing a study on hypertension so then what do you mean by the aggregate of facts you're trying to collect the necessary facts here it will be like systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure which is numerically expressed you express like how much how much mm of hg is systolic blood pressure of the patients what is the diastolic of the patient like 160 by 90 mm of hg it can be affected to a marked extent by multiplicity of causes there could be so many causes which could be affecting the the this readings like the age the mental status the place area whether you are doing before food after food so all these are the different factors and as a researcher you should know all these factors which could have the influence on this and they are called as confounding factors or extraneous variables which are to be assessed in relation with any studies along with the dependent and the independent variables it should be estimated to a reasonable standard of accuracy then you know that it is 120 mm of 120 and 80 mm of hg so suppose you you get a patient who is 160 by 90 when it's normal abnormal mild moderate severe pre hypertension post hypertension so you should be able to have a estimation of this and it should be collected in a systematic manner a time the method everything should be standardized when you are collecting the patients because it can have otherwise if you are not collecting in a systematic manner there could be a so, lot of errors which could be uh, possible in case of any studies and it should you should know what's the purpose why you are collecting for the studies you should have a clear goal a clear outcome of your studies in any aspect of the studies and then you have something called as the statistics must be uh, comparable to the each other so that is where you should always understand that you should be able to relating the aspects that what is their age uh, their height their blood pressure you should be able to compare and these are the important characters of uh, the statistics coming to the bio statistics see whenever you want to apply this basic knowledge or the procedure of statistics to a biological phenomena maybe in terms of the living organisms to plants or animals or human participants uh, for preventive or promotive care uh, it is called as biostatistics so basically biostatistics is the application of the statistical methods to a biological data and they are all about numbers so you can define the biostatistics as the method of collection classification presentation 
analysis and interpretation of biological data. So biostatistics is the uh, development and application of the statistics to whole range of biology. So it can encompass any design of biological experiments starting from collection till analysis and thereby enabling an participant or a researcher or investigator for interpreting the results. So there are different applications of biostatistics. Suppose you're using for understanding health of a community, like how many people are healthy, how many of them practice uh, the health behaviors, how many of like, for example, COVID appropriate behaviors, how many of them are practicing, all comes under health statistics. And whenever you want to apply any medicine or a drug or a procedure or a therapy for any disease, manifestation, it is called as medical statistics. And to know the important vital areas of or vital details of an individual, like the birth rate, death rate, the fertility rate, uh, the male-female ratio, the doctor-patient uh, ratio, the student-teacher's ratio, all this basic vital information comes under vital statistics. So based on the application, biostatistics can have various areas starting from the different aspect of health statistics, medical statistics, and the vital statistics. Whatever could be the reason, there are only two important objectives of statistics. One is to condense, organize, and summarize the data. And the second one is to draw valid conclusion about the participants. Suppose you are doing a study on what is average height of the patients coming to the hospital or average age of the patients, how many male come to you, how many female comes to you. All this can be summarized in terms of a mean or any of the standard deviations. Or suppose you do a study on a particular drug, then you can draw the conclusion about the population by working on the samples. And based on these two objectives, you have two types or two branches of statistics called as descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Descriptive will just describe the phenomena, like the number of COVID patients today in of a COVID positive in Ballari. So this is just a description that has been given and it can be expressed in terms of any central tendency like arithmetic mean, median, mode, or any forms of a, the variability or dispersion. Could be range, interquartile range, average deviation, standard deviation, variance, etc. Whereas when we are applying the knowledge of these methods to draw some conclusion, like whether Navaka Gugulu is beneficial in reducing signs and symptoms of Amavata, or whether the similar Gugulu is beneficial in reducing the weight of patients of obesity. So, and you draw some conclusion for which you have to apply the, the basic statistical tools which are available in inferential statistics. And it encompasses or includes various types of statistical test or any correlation analysis. So descriptive statistics where you're representing the data in the form of tables, graphs, averages, or the variability, etc. So as I said, example could be mean, standard deviation, etc. Whereas inferential statistics is trying to estimate or draw some conclusion about a study, which inputs various types of statistical test like t-test, ANOVA, etc. So at the same time, there are some limitations of statistics because you express only in terms of average or you just are applicable only for the quantitative phenomena. So statistician always wants some numbers and most importantly, it cannot be applied for heterogeneous data. Suppose there are multiple variations. There are, there are not simple, you need to have some complex test procedures to study the heterogeneous of a data. But otherwise the simple tests do not get applied for the homogeneous data. And it is sometimes, until unless you have a clear idea, uh, you uh, have a clear knowledge, it can also be misleading. You can have a wrong interpretation, wrong representation of the data. So the knowledge is very, very important. Only expert only can sometimes have this handle the statistics. But if you have the basic knowledge, it's not a rocket science. Okay. If you have the basic knowledge, you can easily communicate to the participant. And some errors are possible in the decision making. Like there are 
the sampling errors or there are some decision making errors like the type 1 error and type 2 error which will be discussed in by the other uh, speakers so going to the uh, where and all we can apply statistics in ayurveda research see there is nothing called ayurveda research research is universal it is uh, uh, translational and it is uh, all pervading so it all depends how you are going to use this basic knowledge in applying for a research conducted in the field of ayurveda see there are so many uses of statistics or why a, a statistician should be important uh, person in a team of any research work because he helps you for various uh, aspects of uh, the basic studies see there are so many uses but i just summarize into four important uh, areas like he helps you to uh, take up the appropriate study design whether you should go with the observational study design a cross sectional study design a case control a cohort study a randomized and non randomized so which type of uh, study design is suitable to answer this research question is what we the statistician helps you most importantly the sample size calculation how much samples i should study how this is a very important question that always the person is going to ask uh, like everybody tells especially in post graduation we have made a mandate like we we have fixed a number called as 30 and if anybody asks you how did you get this number 30 so just they say that for the last 50 years people have just studied this 30 no so one very very important message i want to pass in this platform to all the post graduate and the phd studies is sample size is not a fixed number it's a mathematical estimation of how many participants need to be selected for your study based on which is a disease that you are studying what is a permissible error and what could be the level of significance and variability that you are expecting in your studies which is easily available in the previous studies or if there are no previous studies you should do a pilot study and get these numbers and that is why dear students remember that statistical analysis and the sample size calculation is not a fixed number it's a number that need to be calculated and it's very very easy there are a lot of simple softwares like r or open open epi or epi info which are very simple softwares which can easily if you have three four important numbers with you you can easily get the very important thing you should know the study design the study outcome and the possible variabilities if you have this three data with you you can easily calculate the sample size for each of the group or each of the arm and very importantly what should the appropriate statistical test that should use for your studies because many times in synapses student just write appropriate statistical test will be used no it is not right you should not write like that you should be able to mention based on the present study design based on the present uh, evaluation the type of research whether it is a uh, uh, hypothesis generating research or hypothesis testing research you should be able to decide right at the beginning of your studies which is the appropriate statistical test for your studies and then you have the the very importantly for the synopsis writing scientific writing you need the knowledge of statistics so i'll just go into the detail uh, still more detail of the statistical test that you should need to apply in your research work what is statistical test why do we need it because in any em empirical study in a medical knowledge you need to represent the data in the form of uh, the outcome and this is what you need some objectivity and these objectivities are provided by the statistical test to differentiate whether the result that you obtain is by chance or whether it's a real uh, effect of any particular drug panchakarma procedures kriya kalpa or any sthanika chikitsa etc so it helps a researcher to summarize or interpret the data and if you have this basic knowledge this statistics is very very enjoyable and you can start getting in love with this particular subject of statistics so statistical test helps you to just uh, differentiate whether there is any real clinical differences between the two groups or two sets whether it really makes a difference in the patients and that is why sometimes uh, it may look apparent that they are different but statistical difference is when you want to see whether there is a significant 
difference occurring in any studies how far these two groups are different what is the p value or the probability value or what's the confidence interval or what's the effect size that need to be calculated to say that there is a difference between these two groups so how do you choose a statistical test there are so many factors which need to be considered when you want to select a statistical test but the, i think if you want to tell me the important factors which are to be considered to choose the statistical test includes it depends upon the goal or the objectives of the studies whether you want to see the association of the studies whether you want to correlate the studies you want to do a, a survey you want to do a prevalence rate you want to do a case control study you want to do a intervention study so this will always help you to because for example if you want to see the the relationship between age and systolic blood pressure then you have to use something called as correlation analysis suppose you want to see whether smoking is going to cause cancer you have to use something called as association studies like chi square and suppose you want to see a case control study you have to use something called as odds ratio suppose you do a cohort study you have to use a relative risk ratios and suppose you do a, a survival analysis like for example now with lot of covid patients how long a patient is going to survive you have to do something called as survival analysis it is not just t test or the paired or non paired t test there are so many other statistical test which you should understand as a student of ayurveda to know where to apply which appropriate test and it all depends upon the goal or the objectives of the studies and then you want to compare between two groups you want to see whether the comparison is in between the mean in terms of the percentage in terms of association or correlation very very important is to because there are two types of the inferential test like you have the parametric test and the non parametric test and the basic difference between parametric and non parametric is whether your your data is normally distributed so what do you mean by this normally distributed data when the data are large enough and symmetrical in nature where most of the data are clubbed in the middle of any distribution it is called as the normally distributed data because if the data are normally distributed you can apply the parametric test but if the data is shifted to one side by the left side right side a positive skewedness or negative skewedness it is called as skewed data s k e w e d skewed means asymmetrical data which are not centrally placed they are shifted to one side then your statistical test would be non parametric test so this is a very very important factor to select the test and how many groups do you have you can have the variations like how many groups do you have in your studies whether it is single group or whether it is two groups more than two groups you have you should understand how many groups you have in your studies then the types of data whether the data are numerical data or whether they are ordinal data or there are the nominal data suppose you want to calculate as male female present absent it is called as nominal data or you want to say mild moderate severe uh, pravara madhyama avara then it is called as the ordinal data and suppose you have any laboratory investigations or you have any numerical values it is called as numerical data suppose you want to test within the groups then you have to use the paired test suppose you want to test like the same samples are tested before treatment after treatment then such tests are called as paired test but suppose you want to test two groups you want to compare group a with group b or you have two groups you have a study group and a control group and you want to see the difference between these two groups then you have to use unpaired or the independent test so the word paired means it is within the group test and unpaired refers to between the groups test so how do you explain the descriptive statistics in any studies it could be in the form of descriptive statistics or it could be represented as graphical illustrations like for categorical data you can express as frequency percentage for numerical continuous data mean or median for variations it could be standard deviation and if it is the graphical illustration for categorical data you can express as bar bar charts or bar charts with error bars 
for continuous data you can use histograms or box and whisker plots scatter plots etc and when it comes to inflation statistics you have two like parametric and the non parametric and basic difference between parametric and non parametric is the data are normally distributed in parametric they are not normally distributed the it is the interval or the ratio data which are used in parametric the nominal or ordinal in case of non parametric the data are independent in parametric the commonly used um, central measure is mean for parametric it is median or mode for non parametric and the parametric is more powerful whereas non parametric is very simple so if i want you to uh, uh, bring your concentration uh, to this table which can summarize you the whole statistical test that you may require like i can say that 90% of the students either pe students or phd students would require one or the other type of the test which is mentioned in this particular table so the first is if the data are dependent or you want to test between the uh, within the groups okay dependent means you are testing the paired groups within the groups if the data are parametric we use paired t test and if the data are non parametric we have to use wilcoxon signed rank test suppose you want to test between the groups and the data are numerical then it is unpaired or the independent t test and suppose the data are ordinal or whether they are nominal and they are non parametric we should go with the man with t test suppose you want to test between the groups and there are more than two groups like in animal studies experimental studies or some uh, culture studies where you can have multiple groups in such conditions you want to test between the groups for a numerical values it is one way anova and if it is non parametric it is kurskal valis test and suppose you want to test the same samples like before treatment after treatment after 15 days after 30 days before stay upana after stay upana after virechana after shamana aushadhis on the same participants like you want to test the blood sugar then you want to use something called as repeated measure anova and same thing if it's for ordinal data we should go for friedman's test but always remember whenever you are using more than two groups either within the groups or between the groups you have to do something called as post hoc test to do the significance which group is working better and suppose you want to do the correlation you have to use something called as pearson's rank correlation or spearman's rank correlation for parametric and spearman's rank correlation for non parametric so suppose you are testing the data within the group it is pair t test parametric wilcoxon non parametric if it is between the groups if it's parametric the unpaired t test non parametric man with t there are more than two groups between the groups if it is parametric it is one way anova it is non parametric it is kuskal valis test you want to test within the groups but more than two occasions it is repeated measure anova and non parametric is friedman's test and for collation parametric is pearson's and non parametric it spearman's i think if you can just have a clear cut idea about this if you can just take a screenshot of this i think most of your studies is almost complete with this particular studies okay so that is the reason why it is very very important to have a a clear cut idea what is your outcome variabilities what you want to assess and which is the type of data if these two things are available with you you can easily make sure which is the appropriate test maybe one way anova or man with knee kurskal valis chi square test regression see suppose your data is survival analysis and there are two two groups then you have to do something called as km plot with lag log rank test and suppose if it is uh, continuous data and you want to test the survival analysis you have to do something called as cox regression apart from the basic test that i have told you so the type of data will always be able to tell, help you what could be the most appropriate statistical test so to conclude uh, i would like to say that he, he who accepts statistics indiscriminately will often be duped unnecessarily but he who distrusts statistics indiscriminately 
discriminately will often be ignorant unnecessarily you cannot say that i didn't know that or i didn't have idea which test i should use as a post graduate student as a psc student it is very very important that you should know the basics of research methodology basics of medical statistics then as a scholar you should be able to make a judgment which should be the most appropriate study design what should be should be my sample size what should be my appropriate surgical test i should be using for my study to draw some valid conclusions so i would like to request you to kindly read this particular article called as using statistics in research by walters which uh, most of my references that i have quoted today is from this particular article i request you to kindly go through this particular article and uh, you can get a lot of basic information about the statistics if you are really interested uh, i request you to please read this book uh, by darrell hoff uh, which says how to lie with statistics because it is said that statistics is one of the biggest lie in this world okay and how to lie as a researcher but see that will help you what you should not do don't think that we are teaching you to how to lie with statistics see basically this is taught to you what you should avoid in your research works and how you should how you can prevent the common error which can be there in your studies uh you can have all this information and many many more uh, about this particular uh, basics of statistics Uh, available all my recordings more than 14 basic recordings of this are available in this uh, uh, site uh, which is constituted by uh, banaras hindu university please go to this site uh, called as www.ayurvedanetworkbhu.com and all the basic thing that i have told today uh, all this are very detailed example with uh, illustrations good number of examples and uh, basic concepts have been explained in detail so can anyone tell me what is the significance of this particular uh, picture that i have showed i asked i started my talk with a question i have one more question for the participants uh, what what i want to emphasize or what i want to express anybody can tell me anybody what was what was the message in my last slide so the last slide i emphasized on the difference between under graduation post graduation and the phd studies your teacher will try to hold your hand uh, do all the possible uh, spoon feeding for you in your uh, under graduation studies but in post graduation a guide or a mentor or a teacher shows you the path and as a post graduate you should have that appetite because in ayurveda agni is very very important and you should have that just as we have the gnana eshana as a theme for this conference you should have the hungry for the knowledge that that is when you can transform all these basics into the outcome in your post graduation so have this lot of appetite towards uh, your studies and if you have any questions i think the exactly i have stopped at it is 10:45 in my watch uh, as promised i have stopped at 10:45 covering whatever i wanted to tell and if you have any questions you are most welcome for the next uh, 15 minutes thank you thank you sir for the informative session um, the session is open for questions we will be taking up a few questions and you can post your queries in the comment box or you can unmute yourselves and ask questions so i think there's one question which says can you please explain the choice of the statistical test again yeah see basically as i said uh, 
you should always understand what is your objectives of the studies whether it is a uh, uh, observation study whether it's a cross sectional study whether it's association study whether it's a intervention study it's a case control study it's a cohort study it's a cross sectional study it's a diagnostic study it's a screening screening of a disease study or you want to develop a new a questionnaire or a tool development for diagnosis or assessment tool is being developed so based on this you have to choose the appropriate statistical test like for example if it is a case control study then the most appropriate statistical test would be odds ratio suppose it is a cohort study the statistical test is something called as the relative risk and suppose if it is a intervention study and you should try to understand whether it is a numerical data ordinal data or a interval or a, a, nom a nominal data and you want to know whether it is to be test within the group or you want to test between the groups if you want to test within the groups then the tests are like the parity test or the tests are something called as a, the repeated measure anova etc if you are testing on two occasions we have to use the parity test for within the groups and if you are testing more than two group two uh, occasions like you want to test on day 0 day 15 day 30 day 45 and you want to test the uh, difference in the blood sugar then you have to do something called as repeated measure anova and suppose the same data are non parametric and if it is within the groups on two occasions we have to use wilcoxon sign rank test and if it is on more than two occasions we have to use fitbans test with the relevant post hoc test and suppose you want to test more than three groups between the groups we have to use one way anova and you want to test the same for a ordinal data you have to use something called as the kuskal valis test and suppose you want to test within the groups on two occasions then if the data are numerical the unpaired or the independent t test and suppose it is for the two groups uh, and the data are ordinal data then you have to use the man with t test what is the view okay. meaning so i just mentioned about that particular chart uh, which talks about uh, the basics of uh, the statistics if you are able to understand this 10 commonly used statistical test i think this is quite sufficient for a post graduate student until unless you do some rare statistical applications for which you have to definitely take the help of a, a statistician right at the beginning of your studies you should not approach the statistician just with your data and uh, asking him to analyze your data and give because he may not be able to help you see so suppose you want to prepare some food or dish you cannot just prepare the food and make it Uh, spoil the food and then go to the statistician right at the beginning of preparing a food you should go and you should be able to get this answer done so there are two important qualities of a good research validity and reliability getting what you want is validity and its ability to get repeated or reproduced to get the same quality is reliability like for example if you go to a hotel and get and you order for a masala dosa and get get masala dosa it is called as validity you got the same texture same color same taste of the chutney every time you go to the hotel it is called as reliability so these are the two qualities of a good research it should be valid and it should be reliable getting what you want is validity and ability to get to get reproduced again and again the same results by using different samples different study designs different outcomes is called as reliability any more questions okay so there is an other question in the comment box by dr misriya yeah how to decide appropriate test according to sample size yeah the samples is also is one of the important factor based on which you can choose the appropriate statistical test if the sample size are small generally what happens the if the sample size are small the data will not be normally distributed so in such scenario you have to go with a non parametric test and suppose the sample size are large 
then the data are significantly uh, passing your normal distribution in such scenario you can choose the most appropriate parametric test so based on samples if the sample size are small one should choose the non parametric test and if the, if the sample size are large one should choose the non -par uh, sorry parametric test so sample size are small non parametric test sample size are large parametric test thank you sir i request uh, students of gmc mysuru to post their questions if any so if there are no more questions i once again would like to thank the organizers uh, all the principals of uh, the three colleges halya madam fatima madam and uh, gajanan hegde sir for this wonderful opportunities and initiatives i also would like to thank the coordinators anand kati sir shivat sir, sir and everyone who has taken a lot of pain in organizing this wonderful uh, sessions and i wish this uh, seminar uh, all the very best and i'm very happy to be a part of this uh, webinar so uh, if you have any if any students want any more uh, help from my side i can share my email id in the chat box the most welcome to uh, contact you in your the, uh, the statistical help uh, you want to in choosing your appropriate test or if you want to help my help in uh, selecting your study design or you want my help in choosing the sample size for your study designs you are most welcome to contact my email id so once again uh, thank you very very much for this wonderful opportunity thank you thank you sir Uh, thank you for giving an overview on the basics of biostatistics, which will be of great help to all the PG and PhD scholars in getting started with their dissertation, while selecting the right statistical tools and also avoiding the mistakes that are generally committed by an amateur researcher. Thank you for the informative session, sir. Uh, now we'll move on to the inauguration inauguration session. For that, I invite Dr. Anand Kati, uh, Associate Professor, Department of Samitha Siddhanta, GMC 